honor to be the first human breaking the sound barrier. A giant prehistoric looking bird. The military is hiding evidence of alien spacecraft. Hi Barbie, hi Barbie, hi Barbie. <laughs> Worst air quality in the world. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was gonna put him in the I shouldn't waste my life like this. I should say experience some sort of dopamine release. You found the reward. That's great. I know. I should stop after this one. <laughs> I should be so much further ahead in life right now. Where you need to fucking start is right here on the fucking testicle right. tears. Yeah. Hey, Mom, what? <laughs> the worst spring wildfire season in history. The average American spends an average of four hours and 23 minutes on their phone every day. I know what I should be doing, or I could watch anything I want, satisfy any craving I have, scroll on the meat market, and completely waste my life. <laughs> We live in an overabundance crisis with unlimited access to distraction, food, products. I'm not here to tell you what you already know. Dopamine, social media, it's bad. Blah, blah. I'm here to give you a once and for all solution to take control of your vices, no matter what they are. And a warning, this will drastically change how you operate. So if you're not ready yet, just come back later. Cause this may be the last video you have to watch while pretending to be productive. For years, I've been trying to take control of my vices. And I thought I had a good setup. No social media apps on my phone, unless I'm posting on Instagram, website blockers on all my devices, meal prepping so I'm not tempted to eat out, turning my phone off at 9 p.m., and then using a second phone to wind down in the evenings that only has meditation apps and fiction audiobooks. But then I'm still just two clicks away from disabling the app blockers and then... Uh... What do venture capitalists actually do? That's interesting. If you're a startup, you need them. If you're on no. Twitter, you've seen them. Stop. And if you're the Patagonia store, After this video. <laughs> North. Somehow the time warped. You just feel extra dumb when you try so hard with a setup like this and you still get sucked down. Can't sleep. I'm tossing and turning. I'm just so sick of this. Of feeling like these vices have control over me. The problem is, as humans, we're not built for this much abundance of everything. And it's not just screens, it's unlimited food, sex, distraction, thousands of products online, anything you can choose. All these vices we now have instant access to. And it's only getting worse. This overabundance crisis is growing exponentially. Once the metaverse comes around, Apple's new glasses, VR, Neuralink, maybe an AI analyzing what will keep you sucked in the most. At the moment, it takes an hour to get your food delivered. What if eventually we have a 3D printer at home that can get you anything you want within seconds? You won't be able to just be disciplined. It's already way too much and more is coming. What can we do against forces so powerful we don't stand a chance as mere human beings. So I decided to hit up two buddies of mine who I think are the most dialed and who probably have figured out a solution. One is Rian Doris, the co-founder of Flow Research Collective, an eight-figure high-performance training company for top CEOs, executives, big companies, and Max Hurden, a productivity master who built multiple million-dollar businesses while also living a very balanced life. Biggest vices are YouTube and video games. I tried an hour a day, I tried taking 30 days off, and none of that worked. And so the only thing that works for me is total removement. For me, it's abstinence or excess, making hard and fast rules, such that I don't have essentially any variability or any choice. You work with a lot of heavy hitters. Have these people handled this? I think it's a very persistent struggle for almost everyone. If you can't self-regulate, you just have to be honest with yourself and cut it. Damn it. And so it's either on or off. So you tell them to give up, basically. That's what works for me. In theory, you could just quit all technology, but think about all the incredible benefits you'll miss out on. Through YouTube, I discovered self-actualization, meditation, entrepreneurship. You can learn anything you want. 90% of my closest friendships today started through a Facebook message. I can stay in touch with everyone I love across five different continents with a simple Instagram story. And for other vices like compulsive shopping or overeating, you can't really quit that, not buy anything or not eat. See the problem? All this overabundance has massive benefits too. So instead of throwing it out completely, the question becomes, how can we use it as a tool without overconsuming? So we end up with all the benefits and none of the downsides. Here is the solution you've been waiting for. This will give you back years of your life, so pay close attention. 
What we need is a strong system to protect us from overconsumption and it has four components. You know I like analogies, so let me explain them using a chess analogy. Recently, my housemates and I got a bit obsessed. Okay, I have two queens now. You only have a king. Are you gonna resign now? No, I'm a... Uh... On the chessboard, you are the king. Your opponent are your vices, temptations, and companies that feed off of your desire. But you have all these tools to protect yourself, which are the four components we'll talk about. Maybe YouTube is trying to show you dumb cat videos, attempting to take your pawn, but you counter move that by installing a website blocker. But then you're tempted to just log out with two clicks. You're vulnerable again. So you have a counterattack by, let's say, changing the settings so you can't log out. This is incredible. This is exactly what I need. Early on, you want to control the center to build a strong position before your enemy does, which in the real world is preventing temptations from happening in the first place. This part of the system will already save you many hours every week by simply asking yourself, where do I get tempted and how can I remove the temptation? Or also, how can I put some obstacles in place? I'll give you an even better Instagram tool. It makes me take a breath. It takes like 10 seconds before I can actually see the app. I've also added Calm as a Chrome extension so that when I go on Instagram, it me to breathe. So block specific websites at certain points, unfollow or mute everyone except for close friends. Sorry, Michelle, if you're seeing this. You know what? Let's set up an automation so that whenever I play chess on my phone, it automatically sends nudes to all my ex-girlfriends. Problem solved. <laughs> I know I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you here, but we're gonna summarize everything in a PDF that you can find in the description below. The good news is we have a lot of tools to protect ourselves, but the bad news is the enemy is always moving. New apps, new updates, companies marketing us, new products that gets us easier access to more overabundance, new Twitter competitor just launched, even something as simple as Android phones having YouTube pre-installed so you can't delete it. All of these things require a counter move and it's like a virus that keeps mutating and we have to constantly adapt to it. This next component of the system is so simple yet ridiculously effective. So if you're not utilizing it, you're an unga bunga. Despite all the apps and rules that you set up, you're still very vulnerable. So many times I've set something up like this and I always fell off. But what's worked really well so far is these time challenges. For example, the Driven 30 challenge that we did with you guys. Or recently, I did a daily 60 minute meditation challenge with a couple of my friends. And they're so much easier to stick to. But why is that? This is something I talked to the Driven community about and also Nicholas Crystal, who I recently recorded a podcast with. Because these challenges all have one thing in common. We have like an accountability group where there's like four people in it together with me. So if I don't go to the gym three times a week, I have to donate 3,000 euros. Whenever I'm with the right people, I notice that the accountability group is just so important. It's like the castling move in chess, where you protect your king behind a rook and a barricade of pawns. Having accountability with some friends always makes you perform on a much higher level. And it also makes these challenges much more fun, which is why we're building the Driven community. Hey Kyle, set up this habit tracker. Every time I miss one of these, I'll give you 10 bucks. I would love to receive your money. All right, so far, the changes that I've made to the system have been a game changer. But there's just one giant problem. You can't control everything. Life happens. For example, tomorrow I'm flying out to Colombia to go to a friend's wedding. A lot of my friends say that I'm very disciplined, but I actually disagree. Because when I am tempted, I oftentimes give into it. But what if I was able to build my ability to resist temptations? And that's called impulse control, which my uncle Andrew Huberman talks about as well. Every day I try and have somewhere between 20 and 30 no-goes. Like I'm ready to pick up my phone, no. All I'm doing is trying to reinforce that circuit because the thing to understand about neural circuitry, it's not designed so that you have a strong no-go response just to picking up your phone. It actually carries over to multiple other things. So for the next few days, I wanna challenge myself to just resist temptations. Oh, made it to Medellin. But I picked a building that has a co-working space and a gym, so I have easy access to that. All right, so next up we have the bachelor party and the wedding. So wish me luck with the impulse control. I'm back from Colombia. Don't get me wrong, it was a lot of fun, but as I predicted, the system completely broke. I had Netflix access, so I watched the McGregor documentary late into the night. The Airbnb had welcome suites and I ate all of them in one sitting until I felt sick. The impulse control thing, I did 
for a day or two, it could have been a much nicer trip if I hadn't spent the time on the phone and overeating and not sleeping well. But now that I'm back, I'm completely dialed in again and everything is going really well. But the same problem still persists. I only do well consistently when I'm in this controlled environment. And I think it's because a major piece is still missing. And my friend Brad was actually going through the same thing. I'm at Brad's place, Brad from Discover Connection. Hey, I'm Brad, how's it going? Okay, that's enough. You have a similar setup, multiple laptops, multiple phones. Wait, you have multiple laptops, multiple phones? Yes. Oh, I didn't know you did that. I did it before you did it. Oh, no, before, I think I, 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 no, I, no, I, no, I did. No. I actually did. I came I did out it, of my mom's before I, with two phones. Before in, in my dad's balls. I've got a laptop that is just for work. I have this computer for when I do need to go on YouTube. Is it always this sticky? Um, I'm giving myself the best possible chance of being able to focus by taking away all the distractions. I mean, the systems and stuff are great, but there's something that I keep struggling with. And like, I feel like I'm almost just like held prisoner to it. It's like, I gotta do all these things to prevent me from going and getting onto social media and stuff. That's what it is for me too. Okay, yeah. Cause here's the thing, I can put all these systems around it and all that, but my brain just finds another vice. I start overeating. Mm -hmm. Or I got obsessed with chess. Like I get an unhealthy relationship with something. So really in the end, it's like, the social media itself isn't actually the problem. There's something else that is the problem. Yes, there is. This is the missing piece, and it's by far the most powerful one. Because we're bringing out the queen, baby. This whole time, we've looked at how to prevent the vices that we escape into. But what are we escaping from? I've noticed that whenever I'm in a lot of pain, nothing works. Because I find some way to escape. It's like a force so strong, you can't build a system around it. You'll find a way. On the flip side, when I'm surrounded by people I love, making memories, having fun, and I'm, I'm happy, I don't need app blockers or accountability or impulse control, because I don't want to escape. We all have ups and downs, so you'll massively benefit from all the previous components, but emotional health is the most important one long term, because it's at the root of it. You may be in a spot right now where you're lonely, don't have a purpose, you feel like your life sucks, and that makes it really hard to not want to escape. Next time you're sucked into a vice, know that you're doing it to escape emotional pain. Allow yourself to feel it. Make it a daily practice to check in emotionally. Meditate, journal, breath work. IFS meditation, which I like to do, that I've talked about on the channel, and it helped me massively. And ultimately, create a life you don't want to escape from. Every generation has their own war. This is ours. And it's a battle worth fighting. So check out the free resource that we put together for you so you can implement all of this into your own life. Stay driven. Thanks for watching.